Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk England versus Fiji. Now we have both teams. Can, can you tell my voice is slightly lo lower than normal? Uh, let me tell you why. I've just been to the press conference at the hotel where Fiji are staying and I'm in the foyer bit on one of the sofas. Um, yeah, and the Fijian squad are just through in the bar there having a coffee and not even joking, was a uh, Naya Thalevu just walked past. There's Simon Rao Louis there. Yeah, um, so I'm going to be doing this England v Fiji preview with the Fijian players potentially within earshot. Despite that, I promise you, I'm going to do this with total honesty and say exactly what I think. Um, so, on to the teams. And as I put the England team up, let me remind you, I'm Tim, this is Egg Chasers, and yeah, uh, I'm taking you with me on this journey around France. We're getting towards the business end, and if you haven't so if you haven't already, please hit subscribe in the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and tell me what you think of that England team and the fact that it was exactly as leaked. Owen Farrell at 10, Marcus Smith at 15, no place in the 23 for Freddie Stewart, Elliot Daly coming in, pack unchanged from the side that played against Samoa. George Ford on the bench. What do you make of that? Firstly, can, I, can we just address the fact that the England team keeps getting leaked? What's going on? Like we've had South Africa's team announced today, France the same, Argentina, Wales, every other side in the quarterfinal, Ireland, New Zealand, every other side in the final. There might have been a little bit of, oh, perhaps this and perhaps that and maybe this and maybe that, but it happens persistently with England where the team gets leaked, a newspaper comes out and confidently says the team and it turns out to be true. That, if that doesn't speak volumes about the the whole system or setup, then I don't know what does. So they need to sort that out, unless they're doing it by design. I don't know what the advantage of that would be. But anyway, as for the team itself, what do you make of it and that selection? Now, I'm going to go out into, into Marseille and get the thoughts of, of fans to the selection. The gut feeling, well, no, not gut feeling. The ones I've spoken to already um, were happy about Marcus Smith, not happy about Owen Farrell. Is that where you stand? What are your thoughts? It was interesting, Simon Rao Louis the Fijian coach was asked about the England team. Actually, this is really interesting. Semi Randrandra said it, Wazay and Naya Thalevu said it, and Simon Raoui said it. When they were asked in the press conference about the England team, they all said, haven't, haven't seen what the team is. And it's been announced a couple of hours ago. I just find that fascinating. And it gives a little sense into the fact that Fiji are just focusing purely on what they do. They didn't even seem interested in which players are playing for England. They just know they're going out to play England, but they're going to play their game. That, I think, was a really interesting takeaway from the press conference. And I don't, again, I don't think they were just saying it. Um, I think they meant it. So that, that I found that really interesting. But as for the England team, Simon Rao Louis said he feels like Owen Farrell is an incredible player and gets some really unfair criticism. Now, partly because of his suspension, and you know he hasn't had a lot of minutes. He, he hasn't played particularly well, but I agree with the general thrust that he gets unwarranted criticism. And here's, a here's my reason why I think this is a smart selection by Steve Borthwick. Okay, in both cases, Marcus Smith, Owen Farrell. Owen, Owen Farrell first. The game in August against Fiji, they ran big men at George Ford all day and got huge change out of it. Owen Farrell is much more solid defensively as long as he tackles legally. I will put that caveat in. Much, much more solid. And there's a solidity with the midfield now. And M Joe Marchant back in a 13 jersey from a defensive point of view is excellent. I'm so much happier with him there. So I think that makes a lot of sense, particularly when you're facing Fiji. Quite apart from the fact that he is, um, what would Richard Wigglesworth describe him as in yesterday's press conference? He just said Owen Farrell's a winner. And these are the occasions, the, the, the bigger the match, the better he plays. And so... I think, I'm hoping, that he proves those words to be true as an Englishman. Uh, on the Marcus Smith front, Fiji don't kick a lot. They, they keep the ball a lot. They have a lot of possession. It's not like playing Ireland or playing France, where if you're slightly out of position in the backfield, they will expose it. That's not the way Fiji play. So in a way, the things that Freddie Stewart is really, really good at, you're not, you wouldn't see the best of it if he were in the team. Whereas Marcus Smith offers another attacking dimension and he has taken to fullback unbelievably quickly. Bearing in mind he'd never played it before. 
And if his very presence in the side means that Fiji alter their tactics based on what their coach and players said about not even caring what the England team was, um, I don't expect this to be the case. But if Fiji did change their tactics and did start kicking more, then I think that that plays into England's hands. England would want that. They don't want the Fijian players running at them. So I think the, the Marcus Smith selection makes a lot of sense. One thing I'm really happy about is that Alex Mitchell gets another crack because he didn't have a great game. However, the pack were poor. In the first 60 minutes, the pack were not good. Well, the first 10 minutes, they were good. And then the breakdown battle is going to be absolutely massive. They've got to be better. And I think whichever players play in the back line, the pack have got to be much better much better that's the challenge let's look at the Fiji side then and um, change at hooker Sam Matavesi is on the bench actually let me tell you about that let me talk to you about that first this is something that came up in the press conference Sam Matavesi's father died in the last week he so he went away from camp and he's had some time with his family and he really wanted to come back he trained with the team this morning and Simon Raului revealed that his two brothers have traveled with him I'm actually getting a bit choked up as I talk about this. It was amazing. So, um, yeah, they've given him as much time as they can to to feel like he's ready. He was desperate to play and be part of it. His brothers are here with him, and the way that his teammates spoke about the way that they've taken him, taken care of him, oh, it's going to be really special. Oh, I'm getting re like chills thinking about it. A an, an amazing story brewing, and um, it's going to be really painful and really special for the Matavesi family so um, that's yeah I'm sure you'll you'll hear lots said and, and written about that um, as for the starting lineup Semi Randrandra is available come through his hamstring strain he starts on the left wing um, and Albert Tuasui see I didn't realise this but in the press conference Al Albert Tuasui revealed that it's been five years since he plays since he has played test rugby in the second row for Fiji he's back there and he's hurt he's going to put it about he is going to put it about. Uh, Waisea Nayathalevu said that this game means everything. Simon Raului said, this is from the press conference, they're looking to free themselves up. And he referenced the, the defeat against Portugal last week, the suggestion being that it might free them up a little bit. It could well be the case that the worst thing for England is the fact that Fiji lost last week. Um, as for the, 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 the accusation of unconscious bias with officials made by um, Saleli Mapasua, the Samoa coach last week, Simon Raulou, he said he, he doesn't believe there is such a thing, not as, or at least not in his experience. Um, so that was quite an interesting one as well. So I, I've taken these two teams, and I'd love to know what you think about this. I've taken these two 23-man squads, and I've put them into one combined 23-man squad. If you had access to all of these players who would make a combined side, here is mine. Just look at the back line. Wow. Uh, again... Much like with the other times I've done this, this is not a criticism of the people that aren't selected. It's just gut feeling who I would take. And that back line is frightening. And it just says to me that these England players who have not, not performed to the level that they're capable need to step up big time or they are going to get done. Um, it, it also demonstrates why Fiji are a running team, not a kicking team when you've got those names why would you alter it which is why I actually think the Marcus Smith selection could be inspired he's one England player who would fit in perfectly with this Fijian team wouldn't he as for the pack um, I think it's a measure of where Fiji have come with their set piece that, that they have a player in the in the front row Luke Tangy has been ace in this World Cup they've got a legitimately good scrum there are some issues at line out and I think that's an area that England will want to target. So Marutoji, Marutoji has to be the world-class performer that he has been in the past and we know that he can be. Tom Curry, maybe you could argue, is lucky to be there over Tangi Tangi Valu. If you remember that game at Twickenham, Tangi Tangi Valu was a menace. He was massive. So I think England have an edge up front, which they have to make the most of. Fiji definitely have an edge in the back line. England have got to match them. England have an edge on the bench. Oh, you can see Darren Alangi should be in red there. So there should be two Fijian. There, there are two Fijian players I've put on the on the bench, and um, the rest are English. And I think that tells a story of how the game may go. England have got to.
get their forwards in the right part of the field so they can exert that pressure. Lavani Bottia is a they have to neutralize him at breakdown. But then Tuis Over's amazing at the breakdown. Nyathalevu can get over the ball. Even Lamani, the scrum half, likes a little nibble. So they've got to take care of the break. Get in the right parts of the pitch, take care of the breakdown, neutralize those Fijian backs. And really, I, I don't know. Do England just need to make this ugly? Let me get rid of all this, sorry. Oops, oh, where have I gone? There I am. Do England just need to make this ugly? Possibly. There are lots and lots of fans making their way into Marseille. Every hour it starts filling up by the port. Loads of red Welsh jerseys. Loads of England fans about. Um, there'll be There's Argentines as well starting to arrive. So it's going to be bouncing this evening. This weekend's going to be massive. I'm going to go and get in amongst the fans and see what they think about the selections. And I'll post those videos on the channel very soon. Thank you very much for your support. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave your comments. I'll be getting in there with you shortly. And um, of course, subscribe. See you on the next one.